Without further ado, I have the distinguished honor and privilege of presenting to you the Queen of Color, the Mother of Artists, globally acclaimed, award-winning Master Acrylic Artist, and the star of our show, Ginger Cook, as she once again mesmerizes her audience with the daring do's and don'ts of painting with acrylic. Well, Ginger, is it really you on a Saturday afternoon? It is, John. How is this fun live? is that? Is, is this, this live? really live? This is really live. Somebody asked, is this live? They got on there and asked if this was live. Yeah, pretty much when it, you know, when you're <laughs> able to chat with everybody, pretty much. It's live. It's pretty much live, you guys. We thought we would, uh, you know, we were, you know, John and I have had different things where we've had to be out of town for different things. And whenever we're gone, we always, uh, you know, leave you guys a video. So it's not like you miss us forever. But we kind of miss you in this live chat and answering the questions. And we had put up uh, two pre-recorded videos last week, which were terrific, by the way. Absolutely terrific. Thanks for the fan, John. That was getting really hot. If, um, if you missed what we did, just dropping things all over the floor, I showed you, um, I'm going to just hold this one up. This is one that's on YouTube now. This was we released Tuesday, this uh, snow scene. Let me kind of turn it like this. I can't see it. Can you guys see that? Isn't yeah. that cool? That's no, perfect. And, that, and honestly, they, um, these little oval canvases, don't buy them until, unless you can find a frame to go with it. I bought these a couple years ago. It's at Jerry's. That's where I found these. And, um, you know, but again, you can do it. We've had people come back with rectangles for those. So that was uh, something we did last week, one of the things we did. And we also have been focusing kind of um, in October a little bit on pumpkins. Uh, and the thing about it is, is if you don't get too Halloween-y, you can bring these paintings clear through Thanksgiving because I mean, you, these are the colors that you, you know, people decorate around with Thanksgiving too. So um, you, can, you can get a little mileage out of that if you don't put a face on it, okay? Just saying. <laughs> so I want to uh, thank everybody for joining us. I know that this is everybody's busy on a Saturday, but sometimes our friends from overseas, different time zones, never get to see us live when we're usually live. If we do a live show, it's usually on Tuesday and Monday nights at um, 7.30 Central, and sometimes that's not a good time for people that don't live in the United States. So anyway, welcome. And I'm going to show you some, here's what we're going to be learning today. We're going to be learning, this comes up all the time. All right, I've got this big painting, but I really don't want to do it big. I want to make it smaller. I don't have a traceable. I don't know how to do this. How do I make it smaller? How do I make it bigger? What do you do, okay? And do I have to have a traceable? You know, no. I mean, I, I know that it's, it's convenient and it's handy and it's not wrong. It's just, um, you, you probably don't, don't need, need a traceable anymore for letters, do you? You just kind of write, okay? But if you were doing a fancy sign, maybe you'd get a... Um, you know, some cutouts and try to do the letters perfectly. Not everybody has great handwriting, but, but this is all learnable, okay? So what we're going to show you is the tricks of the trade. This is what, um, uh, basically, you could take this whole painting and blow it up and put, a, put it as a mural on a wall, or you can have it as small as a postcard. It doesn't matter. I'm going to show you how to do that, and you're going to feel much better about life after I show it to you. I promise you, okay? So isn't that good? You know, not only it's a life trick, okay? John, anything that's coming? You know, can I get right down to the canvas? Uh, we can get right down to the canvas. Let me uh, bring you up. Oh, All right. Mess up now the this is now. I want you to start this painting. You know, for years I taught painting parties. I designed most about eighty percent of all the paintings for a company called Merlota Masterpiece, and I was working there five nights a week. Uh, you know, uh, sometimes I wouldn't get home till one in the morning. Some days I did three back to back. I get uh, back classes sometimes on a Saturday. I'd be teaching. A, a, a class at uh, Jerry's, and then I'd come back and I'd do, um, you know, maybe a couple of, of Merlota Masterpiece ones too. You just can't believe the hours I've put in. But what's what that means for you is I really understand the problems people have, where you things can go wrong, and the reason that people appreciate the teaching on this channel, and I hope if you haven't subscribed you do, because I don't care whether you're at our art academy or whether you're on YouTube. Our job is to help you become better artists, maybe to see things differently. I don't care if you've been painting for a month or, or 10 years. We can always see more. We can always learn more. And believe me, if one of the great, uh, listen, I've been painting for a number of years, and I feel I'm a very accomplished artist. But if, uh, 
of uh, Monet were to come back from the dead and, and ho hold a seminar, I'd be the first one in line to go see his class. We can all learn stuff, okay, regardless of where you are. That being said, this original painting was 16 by 20, and it was done with very inexpensive kind of, the kind of cheap paints that we used to use at painting parties. You know, it didn't cover very well, but still, they came out. And I, someone asked me today, he said, are you going to give us a traceable? I'm telling you, we had drunk people that were just <laughs> barely could pick up a... As Pencil. they say, three sheets to the three wind. Three sheets to the wind. I mean, they start drinking before they got there. And, um, you, you know, about 98% of everybody's stuff came out. I mean, I, you know, the ones that were kind of flopping with their head right in the paint couldn't do much <laughs> with those guys. But, you know, short of that, we were pretty good, right? So, and, and they were just uh, following along with me. So I'm going to show you some tricks, even more tricky than what I showed them, okay? Ooh. So we're not going to be doing this uh, 16 by 20, but you could, okay? But... We're going to be using regular acrylics, professional acrylics, and we're going to be doing this 11 by 14. So I printed this out. What is this? 8.5 by 11. 8.5 by 11. Okay. Regular, regular sheet of paper. Just a sheet of paper. Now, what I did was I went ahead and I, I, I've done the fold in half trick, and then I folded it in half, and I folded it in half. And I folded it in half like this because I yeah, hate rulers. You know, that, that reminds me of a story. I'm going to give you one of my stories. Yeah. Back in, I guess it was middle school, they had you take those, um, those tests, evaluation tests to see how you're doing. Yeah. Well, I thought it would be fun to make faces out of the little dots. You know, the dots on the page, you had to fill out the little dots. So I made little smiley faces and, you know, little creatures and characters. And you know, unbeknownst to me, that's not the right answer. <laughs> And so well, they, called me down to the, they called me down to the, uh, what do they call it, the, the, the person, the, 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 the guidance counselor type yeah, person yeah. that says, you know, are, are your faculties working? <laughs> so they gave how me a little were, test. How, the, how old were you? This was, I think, seventh grade. Seventh grade, and you were making little smiley faces Absolutely. on the dots. Okay. And so I, they, they gave me a little test. They give, you know, they give you all these little things. And one of the things they did, they say, fold the paper in half. How many pieces do you have? I go, well, you have two. And fold it in half. What do you have? Four. What do you fold it in <laughs> I did it. it, it then why did you have a problem with this test? So I go, I think they're stupid. They're a waste of my time. So I made smiley faces. So he pulled out my paper. He looked at it and goes, I see it now. Go back to class. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great story, John. That's a great story. So, so now you see what that I folded it. Now what I've done is basically that's just half of this. And then I took some white chalk. And I, and I drew, go ahead and I kind of made the lines where you and I could see them. Okay. Then I took a T-square. If you guys don't own a T-square, go out and buy one tomorrow. And this is where you want to save your coupons. This is, your, this is our tip number one. Um, Ooh, write them they down. Never, they never put these things on sale. This is where you want your half-off coupons. And all the years I've been you know, uh, fooling around in art stores you know, looking for deals, I never see the T-squares go on sale. And one of my students came in one time with a clear one, which I really like. And I, I have these in all sizes. But basically what you do is you figure out, now half of a, you know, half of a, um, <laughs> a, a 11, John's just going to give us the answers right now. Half of 11, half of 11 is a five and a half, right? How okay? did you know that so quickly? Well, I, I cheated and I looked it up. But um, I have a ruler that tells me these things. Assuming I have my glasses on, I can read the little numbers, right? But that being said, you know, you've got to go with me here. So I've dri dr driven. Uh, I dritted? I have not driven. I have actually <laughs> taken some, just a, a green colored pencil, something you could see, and I basically I have gridded this um, uh, this little canvas. But it doesn't matter what size canvas you got. You just do that, right? You figure out what half is, what a fourth is, and uh, you know it tells you on your ruler. And if you're not sure, ask uh, ask Google. They'll tell you. If you you know if you have any problem with math, you you don't have a John handy. You just say, hey, what is this? You just you, you can, can now ask Alexa. the computer the stupidest stuff, and it knows. It's let's, so cool. Let's huh? see if Alexa knows. Alexa, what's half of five and a half? Well, that's more confusing than ever. <laughs> I don't know what that so means. So you'd like my answer better. <laughs> I like your answer better. She got too technical, like, you know, like we were going to go to the moon with her answer, with the digits and stuff. Well, we're not. All right, so you see that. Now, what you notice here is that our pumpkin comes slightly above half. Now, it comes, if you think about a circle, all right, and we're going to call this 12 o'clock right here, okay? I'm going to call that 12 o'clock on my pumpkin. And I'm going to come up just a little bit above that, just a little bit, just above, above that. And I'm going to come from here to here. And I'm just going to, and about, to, it, it ends, see, look here, 
where this folds right here, this is where this curve. So this curve is coming like this. So it's rounded and it comes there just a little bit past there. There's that. And then down here at the bottom, okay, we're cutting off a little bit of this corner right here. So we're just coming around here like this and following the circle. And this is about, I don't know, three fingers over. But you, you can kind of see from your grid where it has to be. Do you see that? This pumpkin isn't completely round. Then we're cutting off a little bit of a corner right here on the edge, not much of anything. And then right where it crosses over, there's a little bit of a corner, okay? So you're going, well, that's kind of weird. Yeah, and then it kind of does this. It kind of does this. It curves, and then it curves, and then it kind of curves like a little section, like bloop, 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 okay? Bloop, now, bloop, bloop. You, you have like to it? make the sounds. If you don't make the sounds, it's not going to work. Yeah. So if that's true, which I just said it was, okay? That's where our <laughs> pumpkin was. So that's, you always start with, what do you know for sure? Anything. What do you know for sure? Then what we know for sure is that straight up here, about um, um, our, our circle, we have a circle that comes, it's, it's going to come around here like this, like a half circle. Now, if you have trouble drawing a half circle, do you have trouble drawing a half circle? Find something round like a, like a, there, half circle. Find something round, you know. Pot lid, plate, I don't care, dinner plate, tea, tea cup, tea saucer, whatever. Find something round and then just draw it in. All right, so there, that's easy, yeah? So, so far we have a pumpkin and a, and a sunflower center. Sounds good to me. Does it sound good to you? Sounds good to me. Now, over here on this, on this circle, between this point and this point, and about halfway on this one, but it really is a little bit past halfway, actually a little bit past halfway, we have another little tiny circle, and I trust that you could draw that in. I feel that you could probably get that in, like the front of the letter D, all right? So then what? Well, that's what we got. This is, oh yeah, let's draw the belly button in it. So, all right, so I've got the, about the middle of this square right here, the middle of this one, right in here like that. If I draw this down here like that, the middle of this and the middle of this. I'll just make an X right here. Do you see that in the second one down here like this? So um, let's continue this line. Where's our green pencil? Let's continue this line down. All right. So I said it was in the middle of this one, like this. Here's our X right here in the middle of this. What would be this little square right here is the center of our, our pumpkin. You see, and it's going to wheel around past here like that and go up like this. We're going to say that we've got a um, little stem, kind of curves like that. Okay. And then from here, we're going to cut this corner off like this and bring this grid around. I want you to just see what we're doing. And the same thing here. I think I'll bring this down further so you can see it. We're just going to take these, this pumpkin's going in sections. And that's really all you have to know. You really don't have to know much of anything. It's just from this center point, everything's going in sections like this, all right? So this is this is what we know with the pumpkin is everything's kind of like a like a circle coming out from this like that. Does that make sense? So everything's kind of splaying out like that. Okay? And then our sunflowers are going to be doing some stuff. You know, but what stuff? Well, for instance, um the, this sunflower is behind this one, okay? So what if I said this was a let's make this a clock. This is 3 o'clock. This is 12 o'clock. Everybody's with me on that? Let me just sharpen this pencil so we can all read these things. It's so simple. I tell you once, you, once you get this down, you'll be so impressed. Okay, so. Um, all right, so this is 3, three o'clock. That's 12 o'clock. So right about 3 o'clock um, and past the center line, not very far, right where this cross is here, like, like that, okay, I've got a shape like this, a petal, like that. See it? Okay? And then I've got another one that's coming here, like, like rabbit ears. Maybe it's a little bit fatter. doesn't have to be perfect. Then you've got one that's going to be coming here somewhere and kind of disappearing. We're not talking about that one. Okay? So how does this arc up? Now, you've got to think of, right, if this is my circle here, okay, and this one will be a little bit longer than that, imagine a circle going this way. Does that make sense? Imagine the top of this being a circle. So then all you do then is, you know, put, you know, just draw in some um, petals that are, you know, doing this. Draw them in. 
th these ones here are almost going to go off the canvas, so they're coming around. This is the shape. And um, maybe you've got one coming out like that. So that's basically the shape of, uh, of, this, fl of this flower, okay? So we've got a flower, we've got a pumpkin. We've got this one, and the same thing here. We're going to say if this is 12 o'clock, 1, 2 o'clock, right about 2 o'clock, we've got a petal coming, coming off this way, like that. And you just keep going with these. You know you've got some coming this way, and they're kind of, kind of, come down they're going to just disappear behind here like that and then i mean these this is so easy you guys i mean once you once you get the hang of this it's just you're just going to say here's some petal. you don't even have to do much <laughs> like that is alexa talking to us now yeah she uh she feels now we she didn't understand what you were doing well now that we've included her in the <laughs> once you once you let these machines talk they don't <laughs> shut up right okay so i'm going to say that that's my that's basically how I drew that in from this diagram, okay? I mean, that's how simple it is, and you can do that for anything. This was just pretty simple. Now, the colors we're going to use, we're going to put all this stuff away. The colors we're going to use are um, burnt umber, cat, cat yellow medium, that's a, um, uh, yellow oxide, white, uh, purple, ultramarine blue, thalo blue, all the, you know, our, our stuff, cad red medium. Our stuff. Ca well, everybody says, what colors do you use? <sighs> and then, you know, someone else wrote me, a very, very nice lady wrote me today, dear friend, and she said, you know, I'm, I, I really want to use your paints. And so I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to get some Matisse. And she was worried that she had some gold and then some Liquitex and stuff, and she wished she had Matisse. Listen, you guys, here's the deal with the paint stuff. Golden is generally considered the Mercedes, I'm sorry, the Mercedes of all paints. I don't, I, I have some golden. I can, you know, I'm out of paint. Um, I don't want to, I spent an hour and a half going down to the art store. It's about three hours to run down to Houston to get Matisse. I'll buy golden. It's generally more expensive than the other companies. And they rarely, even when, um, they're technically not allowed to put it on sale. And so a lot of companies mark it up and then put it on sale for the regular price. But <laughs> you'll see Matisse and Liquitex actually go on a real sale, what I would call a real sale. And so, I mean, I will buy uh, you know, I like gold, and I think it's a great paint. I think Cinema uses it a lot. It's lovely. Um, but, uh, but Matisse is good. So, so, and, and, and for years, before I ever heard of Matisse, and golden wasn't around, I used Liquitex heavy body paint, and I was fine. So, you know, I just like professional uh, as opposed to student-grade paint because the colors, it's the pigments they put in them. The colors are better. But don't throw out anything. You know, you can always use something for an underpainting. You know, don't throw out anything because you've got to, you know, we didn't do an underpainting on this because yellow paints really well over white. And uh, like here's some golden uh, cad yellow medium. Um, Liquitex, the thing I like about Liquitex is they have self-cleaning caps. See, like this is a um, ultramarine blue. And if you, you get tired of screwing around with caps, you know, and they don't want to go back on after about three quarters of the way, this, th these caps are self-cleaning, which everybody would do that. I remember saying that to the Utrecht Paint Company when they asked me for opinion. I said, I like everything except, um, that's another brand. Utrecht is a professional brand of paint. Um, so they really can't stand your caps. They're just terrible. And they said, well, we've got them ordered for the next hundred years, so live with it. And I think that's what, um, <laughs> And you know, so they, you can see why we don't use that paint right there. Well, I'm just saying that, you know, and then Matisse said, well, we're going to do these little flip-top caps. Great idea. Great idea, but this is acrylic paint. When it dries, it's like a volcano. Then it's just dried lava, you know? Yeah. It's, it's, it's like a rock. So here's the flip-top cap. It's, that's a great thing for oil paints because it doesn't do that. But here's a little phthalo blue. We just squirt a little bit of it out. And the flip-top cap is sort of a good idea, but not, not as good as the Liquitex self-cleaning caps. I'm sorry. Everybody should just copy that. It's a great idea. I wish everybody did it. Of course, they're not asking me. They should ask me. They should ask you. I mean, if you think about it, think about how many people are painting over 55, okay? And the older you get, some people have arthritis in their hands. It gets a little harder, trickier to do things. And so you need to make stuff life as easy on yourself as possible. I feel very fortunate. I've been using my fingers for a long time, and I don't have that. But still, I get very frustrated when, the, when I can't get um, the um, cap back on. Now, responsible artists, if you're one of these sock folders, you would dip the cap in water every time and put it on your tube, and then it's moot. you'd always get the cap back on. But who remembers to do that? You should do that, but who remembers? I don't remember to do that. I find, you know, I'm just, I'm lucky to, 
I feel lucky to get the cat back on at all. All right, so here's white. And the other thing, you guys, I hope you always know that you, you're you dead in the water without white, so you should always have giant tubes of it. This is a big tube of the Matisse white. And even though I put the cat back on, you see it's still a little stuck here. Here we go. This is the other thing. You're not supposed to squeeze, you know, anything from the middle of the toothpaste or paint from the middle of the tube, but you can still fix that. You can come up from the bottom. You've got to be kind of be careful because you can split these tubes. Have you ever had that happen? We split a tube? That's just darn annoying. All right, so we've got some paint. White, yellow oxide, cad yellow medium, purple, ultramarine blue, thalo blue, burnt umber, and cad red medium. Okay? So, well, we're, what we ought to do is paint some uh, yellow first. I say let's do that. So let's just take some uh, cad, cad yellow medium, and uh, let's just go ahead, and even though we know this is where I'm just going to kind of leave my stuff, I'm, I know I want this um, yellow. So I'm just going to go ahead and paint this in. Do we have any questions, John? Yeah, can you slide your little paper off? Do what now? Your little, just push that back. <clears throat> Here? Yeah, we don't need to see that. We have ours up. Okay, Thank yeah. You. Yeah, get it out of the way. Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah, I can do that. Corner. I'm just going to come around here because I know I want all this yellow. And this is, um, this is my underpainting. Okay, and I'm going to come around here, and I'm going to go. I know I want a yellow under here. Just pretty much yellow under here. I mean, I don't think you even had to draw these petals on. I just showed you how that would work, because you know you're going to put them back here. Okay. So this is kind of fun, and this is a nice painting to do for the holidays. I'm using a ruby satin silver bright brush. It's a it's a number probably a number what? What is this? Get the, well, if you want us to tell the numbers, you really ought to um, make it where the doesn't wear off in ten seconds. It's the it's about as wide as my thumbnail. Is that helpful? What is that? Quarter inch? Half inch? Half inch? Yeah, but here's the other thing that's really annoying. Ginger's on her high horse, but what annoys Ginger um, is that um, brush companies don't, you know, a number three in one brush company doesn't mean diddly squat to another brush company. It's only numbers in the family of the brand. So basically you kind of want to go for, um, um, you know, width or something. Bright brushes, that's all the same, filberts and stuff. But when it comes to the actual... Um, um, Uh, painting of the, um, if it comes to that, you're, you're not going to get much further, you know, as far as, you know, numbers go. When you try to find, a, you can't cross brand with numbers. Okay, so now what? Um, I could paint these, um, let's take a little white paint in yellow, right, like that. So we'll change this color a little bit, and I'm going to paint these petals in, just adding a little bit of white to my yellow, like that. So I can kind of tell the difference between the, between the background yellow and this one. I'm just going to kind of paint these in here. We have to layer stuff anyway. And again, this is sort of fun. i got to tell you, this was a crazy week. We, um, we were out of town for the weekend. I came back and I went to the sink to, get, to fill up my old glass of water so that I could get, get, fill up the Keurig coffee pot. And um, and what jumped down, I tell you, just missed my head. A giant, I tell you what, it was this big. A How giant spider, this big, a giant spider jumped right in the glass. And, of course, I was over the sink and squealed. And then threw the uh, contents of the water into the sink. And then this thing was scurrying all around, right? <laughs> scurry, scurry, right? So I've got the spray hose I'm trying to you know, kind of flush him down the drain, he's not going. I mean, it took, you know, this is a fast spider, but he had no interest in being flushed down the drain, but we finally got him. But I'm telling you what, it just, I'm thinking, man, what, that could have landed on my head. He just had fell, fallen down from the ceiling, that's, doom, into the glass. Creepy. Okay, so, um, while that's drying, we're just going to let that dry, because we're just kind of doing underpaintings, right? Let's do something with this pumpkin. And, and, and what? Let's take a little bit of um, a yellow and a little bit of cad red medium and make kind of a nice orange color. It doesn't have to be, you know, too, too, you know, no white. And let's just start with the pumpkin like this and start painting um, our pumpkin in like that. We'll just start with a color and start coming this way. Now, you notice I'm not outlining the pumpkin. Do you see that? I'm following the... Um, 
the curve of where I want the brush strokes to go. I'm not really outlining it. And I might put a little tiny bit of water on the tip of the brush, cap it off on a rag, which I've got somewhere. Come back. Your brush is, um, you know, absorbing uh, the paint, and the paint's drying in the brush, too. So I'm going to come up here where I want my stem. I actually don't have to save the stem out. I can just go ahead and, and paint. If I paint the stem out, and I'll tell you why I'm going to do that. If I paint the stem out, then I have a little more freedom to put my stem and get a little more artistic with it. Something that can kind of go on the edge. And if you've been out shopping pumpkins uh, recently and they're fresh in your memory, you know, because that's kind of what you need to do, okay? Got to have them fresh in your mind. You will notice that all the stems are different. So if your stem looks different than mine, it's just one of the other pumpkins in the patch, right? Okay, so you see how we're just kind of keeping changing the, 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 the tones of the orange like that. You see how I'm bringing this around like that, coming out from the center or where we said that was, and just getting new paint. If you find yourself painting something and nothing happens, get more paint on the brush. Okay. Now, somebody complained the other day and wrote to us that their paint was drying out so fast. And I know that sometimes if you We're live dead. in a... Huh? We're out at the moment. We're gone? Yep. Back up. Uh, you're frozen solid to top screen there. Still? Mm, you're coming back. You're back. I'm back. Woohoo, we're back. All <laughs> right, so we're back. We have a little bit of this freezy stuff happening, but that's okay. Um, there we go. We're going to bring this around like that, see, like that. Now, what happens here is now we're going to start, uh, remember, I'm just getting, I'm not mixing just a whole pile of orange paint. I'm mixing these colors as I go, so they sort of vary a little bit. Do you see that? I'm sort of varying it, so these sections, when I paint them in, Okay, I'm going to kind of curve this back up this way. Let's just see the trick on this. And, and so the, your brush strokes determine that something's round. It's a little bit more, a little bit redder here. It's a very, uh, you know, fun, bright, happy pumpkin, you know, thing to paint. We did some neat pumpkin lessons um, uh, last, uh, two weeks ago, and we did, I showed you how to paint this, all right? and a couple of other ones and then um you know and we did a get and everybody's giveaway if you won one of our giveaways from um we had to varnish those pictures and let them dry before we put them in the mail but they all went out in the mail on the um yesterday yesterday everything went out in the mail so if you got were one of the ones that won from our giveaway expect it in the next few days expect your um your painting to come it's in an envelope from us okay now you see how we've almost looks like at this point a tangerine, doesn't it? Because it you really see does. how it does, doesn't it's look a like big a tangerine, like a giant tangerine. But you see, we've got um, it's going to be a little darker in the center, um, in here. This is going to be a little darker coming out. Now look, I'm just taking a little red here, cad red medium, and just sort of darkening this up here. Okay. The nice thing about using professional acrylics is that you can really layer this. So you see now we're going to start adding some more color to this. A little bit of cad red, a little bit stronger the cad red. I'm going to say it's a little bit darker on this side. And the thing about it, the thing about a ruby satin um, silver uh, bright brush or any of the angles is that you can do flat, but when you put it on the edge like this, you can get a very nice line. Okay, so we're not trying to, you know, get too, too clever here, but we want it a little bit darker here up from the bottom like that. I'll just kind of bring this up a little bit. There you go. Kind of blend this up. I'd like to thank Miss Brooke for the donation. Well, Miss Brooke, thank you so much. And you guys, this is something that, that only can happen on our live uh, shows where um, people can donate. And how do they do that, John? Right there in the chat box on uh, apparently non-Apple iOS devices, you have a little, you have your little smiley face and a dollar sign. That's called a super chat. You click on the super chat, and you can write a little something and make a donation. We thank you very much. You know, we um, 
you know, this helps us. A lot of uh, things, you know, we have an online, for those of you who are new, probably some of you already know this and have heard the story, but we do have an online art academy where we give personalized attention to people. You get personalized art coaching, and it's really less than the cost of two tubes of paint a month to be a member and get art coaching. And that's so inexpensive compared to if you were to come to Houston and, you know, for the last few years just be taking classes from me, you know, I, you know just like any other normal art teacher, you know, or piano teacher, it's, it's not inexpensive. But this is like the least, we have over 350, I think we're up to about 350 lessons, aren't we? Now, it's a ton of lessons. There's a ton we, of them. And there's a ton of them. And we, on all subjects, from very basic beginner, like what we're doing here, to, um, uh, to, to advance, to very complex advanced lessons. And you kind of build up to that. Now, look, I've got a little water on my brush now. I'm going to show you this. And I'm just kind of, just kind of blending a little bit, just with a little bit of water. See that? Sometimes you can do that. But now look, I've got all these segments just because I didn't mix the paint too well. Cool, right? So while that's drying, meanwhile, back at the ranch, this is drying, yeah? Okay? So let's take a little bit of, let's rinse our brush, and I'll tell you about that. And what I was going to show you, we had the coolest stuff, um, like um, a couple weeks ago, this was one of the lessons that we offered on our website, gingercooklive.gallery kind of showing you how to paint like Thomas Kincaid, you know, that kind of Thomas Kincaid style. But we don't teach you just to paint like that. We teach you to paint like you. So you'll do everything from the old dead masters. Here's one of our old dead guy artists. This was this week's um, uh, tutorial on, this is one from the guys from the 1800s, this cool basket. Um, Nicole East did a really good job on hers, and she sent it in for art, or a little bit of art coaching, and then we'll show, show that to you sometime. But uh, she just showed me that today. She was the first, I was one of the first ones to get that back. Um, this is a, another great uh, tutorial from a couple, you know, from last year on our, our website. This is our website. These are called the Pumpkin Patch Kids. So if you're enjoying that, you want to do something for the holidays, I love that. So anyway, that's some of the stuff we've done. And um, moving on, I, I've rinsed my brush. Now, when you rinse your brush, this is real important. Squeeze it out. And make sure there's no water dripping. Let's take some burnt umber and a little purple, okay? And let's just come on up here like this, and let's get this center. Now, I'm not going to go all the way to the edge. Now, this is critical. I'm leaving a well, not critical. I mean, critical is ambulance time, but but it's important. Let's not, let's not go. Let's not go critical. Um, yeah, one of my um, friends' kids was explicit, telling her mom that. Uh, that she was, uh, oh, what was it, just, that wasn't critical, but it was something like that, depressed. It couldn't be just sort of depressed, it has to be critically depressed. Critically depressed. Critically depressed, and this is, you know, the kid's 12, right? You know, <laughs> couldn't be something slightly less than that, you know, <laughs> just, really? All right, so where I come here, all right, where I'm coming here, I'm just going to, little, I'm right around these uh, petals, I'm going to come here like that, but where it's, um, where the edge is, I don't want it that dark, okay? So I'm just going to leave a little bit of room here to play with the edges, and we're going to do the same thing in this one. I'm going to come on in here like that and get this dark. Layla, Layla, thank you very much. She made a donation to the website because she's on an iPad. We do have a green button on the website in the right-hand side of the home page. Oh, thank you. Thank and we you, do thank appreciate you, thank you. Those donations. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate that very much. Um, we have figured out some exciting news. Um, we did? Yeah, we do. Oh. We have a way to travel and film lessons. <gasps> no. Which, yeah, we do. John and I were doing that this last weekend. Uh, we didn't, you know, didn't want to tell anybody we were going to do that in case it didn't work. You know what I mean? I mean, because sometimes when you're traveling and you know, the, you know, something doesn't work out, what, what we figured out is if we film them and I'm painting, I can come back into the studio and do like what 90% of the other artists here on YouTube do is do a voiceover after they, after they film. Well, for one thing, you get, you, it's really interesting because I can think of more things when I'm not focusing on this to tell you. And we will be having, in a couple of uh, weeks, I will be putting some of the, we will putting those on, on we're going to put a couple of those on YouTube because John and I have had a, had a trip planned from last year and um, we're going 
from last year, but on last year we planned this trip, I think back this time last year, didn't we? Yeah. We put a deposit down and, and we invited some of you guys to go. I don't know if anybody's going, but it's a, it's a, we're taking a two week cruise from, um, from New Jersey through, uh, to, what is it, eight ports? Eight ports. Eight ports down to Galveston, which is our home port here in Texas. We're going to leave our car down there and then fly up and then take it in. We're going to go to eight different ports. And while we're on, on the ship, we're going to be able to film and t t take you with us, you know, and show you some stuff and paint right off the ship and views and stuff. It's going to be great. And these lessons are all going to be either on our website or on YouTube uh, in the weeks to come. And we're really excited because this is the pre-op of being able to have people come along and paint with me, right? And so we'd like to be able to do that a few times a year because when you travel, what happens is when you travel and you can do things, you get inspired to paint. I mean, if you're just always staying in your studio, never going outside and seeing, you know, really smelling the roses, you know, everything gets pretty stale after a while. Okay, so now this is pretty wet. I can't risk this yellow getting into that. Does that make sense? Because that's pretty dark. So I'm going to keep working on my pumpkin down here a little bit with the shadows. I thought you guys, I knew you'd like that. I thought that would be really cool. And at, at this point, you know, we're just, we told people that they wanted a list of schedules of when we thought we could get out of town. And John and I have figured out how to go totally on the cheap when we cruise. We figured out how to get all kinds of deals, we, you know, and, um, you know, get a little inside cabin and, you know, because it's in, you know, find these last minute deals where they're very inexpensive or buy, you know, you know, put a deposit on a couple years ahead so when they're discounting it. And, um, and we, we, we've been sharing that with some of you guys. We, there was a site called, um, for our YouTube, most of you guys are Facebook people, aren't you? Everybody's pretty much Facebook on here, aren't they? Not, some of you aren't, I know. But if you're interested in travel, this uh, Facebook has some, you know, some games. If you hit there, it says something more. Then it says, if you scroll down, it says more games. And then there's this site that's called My Vegas, okay? And basically, it's some really stupid, sorry, to me, <laughs> a little, I mean, they're stupid. I mean, they're stupid, but you know, I mean, they've been around for years. I just didn't know what the purpose of them was because there's all kinds of slot machine games and weird games on Facebook. But the My Vegas slot machine games have a perk. So what happens is, you know, I'm still adding some darker reds to this, and you know, a little tiny bit of brown. I'm going to take a little bit of burnt umber and put in there because I want this a little darker here, down here at the bottom. And I'm going to just do a little bit of a shadow here while this is still wet with my orange. Come down here and just suggest a little bit of a. We're not putting in every um, all, every one of the um, of the little seams like we you know that we're not trying to paint these perfectly, but we are going to say it's a little bit darker down here at the bottom like that. Use just the side of the brush. Once you get paint on, you can kind of you can kind of darken your um, your canvas like this. And uh, did you have to have a layer of paint on first? You see how this is starting to look rounder because it's darker at the bottom? Okay, I'm going to do that. And I'm going to come down here and um, maybe make We'd this like a little darker. We'd like to thank Anne Marie for the donation she made. Oh, Anne Marie, thank you very much. We really appreciate it. I think since my Anne Marie, that's the, one of our members too. Yes. Who paints all these great pictures. And was saying, she couldn't find something the other day. And that, there's a painting journal that we have. It's called How to Do a Painting Journal. And that is on YouTube, you guys. And I think I talked, it's on, look under my, we do these playlists for a reason. So like everything about color mixing is under our color mixing playlist. All right. So if you want to know anything about color mixing, I've got probably eight videos on how to mix colors on our playlist. And in that, in that playlist, there's a one on how to make a journal, color mixing journal. Okay. And yeah. the reason you want to do that... Yeah, two of them. Yeah. The reason you want to do that, you guys, is that... And I see, I've seen this happen. Oh, God. One of the wonderful benefits of being an art teacher for a number of years, besides being a professional artist, is that I see what happens to people over a period of time. The reason I keep repeating things over and over again is that no one can remember anything. And as we get older, we remember less, it seems like. You know. Well, it's not that we remember less. We just have so much more to know. Okay. It's when you have five things, how easy is it to remember those? You know, after, you know, 90 years, you've got a few more things to think about. I like that, John. I think that's good. Anyway, so the reason you do that is you're coming along and you're doing a painting. Let me see if I can give you an example. Do we have a painting? Um, dumb, dumb. Oh, yeah. Well, let's just take this one, for instance, right? You're coming along and maybe you want to touch up the background, but you can't remember how you did it because you were in the moment... Because you get in the zone here, and there really is such a thing as an artist's zone. You get in the zone, 
and this you've come back and maybe you nicked it or you wanted to touch something up and for the life of you can't remember how you got that color. Well, if you've been keeping a painting journal for each one of your paintings, right, and write down what you did, background, how you did it, um, and, and, and write that, and you keep that journal going with a little picture of the painting, and then also it's very handy when someone comes to you and says, that is so nice, you don't look busy, would you make, make, make one for me? Or maybe they're even willing to pay you to do it, okay, that'd be good, we're not, we're not against that, okay. I'm going to say there's a little bit of a shadow right here. I'm going to put that in like that. So you want to keep that. You want to keep a record, a colored journal record. Um, what we found when we were, my daughter and I, Cinnamon, when we were when we were painting in France, we went to France about a couple months, some years ago, and um, I bought a bought a French easel, one of those wooden, stupid wooden things, and brought it over there. And then once you load it up full of stuff, good luck picking it up. I left it. I mean, it was just. What a waste of time that was. But anyway, you get out on location and you're painting, you lug a lot of stuff. What we thought was handier was to just take your paints in a little tiny notebook and make color references. In other words, rather than paint the whole painting, say, this is what the greens look like, this is what the sky looked like. These are color references. Make a little miniature color journal and then get back in the studio and paint off your photograph. Just a thought, just throwing that out there, you guys. All right, so while this is drying, which is looking pretty good, see, we haven't had to do too much, isn't it? I and mean, we've really got a nice looking pumpkin here. I think we've got it. Let's, let's work on our sunflowers. So we're back to our yellow, okay, and a little yellow oxide. We'll put those together, okay? And we want to come along here like this. And um, I think I want to just sort of outline them, kind of just do a little bit of an outline on these. Again, just using a little bit of yellow oxide, just kind of kind of put these in again a little bit right like that and maybe I'll make this one a little bit darker like that and then as long as I've got some yellow oxide I think I will come here and kind of do just a very gentle general outline okay don't go so this is pretty fast you're not going to go real slow this isn't something you're going to spend like a hundred minutes doing you're just going to kind of vaguely sort of suggest that because you're going to paint over it okay now the trick is we're going to take a little yellow a little orange. I hope our feed still holds up here. And I want to come up from my flower like this and lift up. Like that and lift up. And then do the same thing. A little yellow, a little kind of a light orange color. Come out from the base of the flower and lift up like that. Let's lift up. There you go. The same thing here like this. Lift up. Get a little paint on your brush. And, um, and kind of lift up. This is not meant to be a real detailed painting, but it, it can be. But this is what you want to do, just pull and lift up. And then I think, you know what, I need a little water. So I'm going to move this around here like that and put some water in my container. Doop. I got that little, that's a handmade stone heart with a lid from uh, Haiti when I was with Andrew in Haiti, one of this artisan's friends uh, that he, you know, these were all hand done. But I needed something that wasn't going to tip when I was painting. Uh, you know, I need a little water container. Sometimes you want just the tip of your, ooh, see, now we got into that dark brown, didn't we? So what do you do with that? Well, we ad lib a little bit, right? I don't want to be in that dark brown. So I had a couple choices. I could either take some water and wipe it off, which works too, by the way, because this is kind of dry, or I could have kind of, so not that. Well, I mean, look, this happens to you, so this is why we dry. I've tried to kind of avoid having to use the hair dryer too much, but I may, I may just have to take a minute and do that, John, so we don't have more of these little oops. That's one of the reasons I'm always... accidents? Well, I always tell people to dry, right? Be and for this very reason, you know, you want to be able to, um, to dry. And, uh, and and kind of avoid that stuff, okay? All right, there we go. And I'm just, I think I'm going to erase that one right there. Here, let me show you how to erase. Did you guys know you could erase? Rinse, wipe, swipe. Didn't know that, did you? You can erase. Can lift up anything. There. As long as it's not dried. 
as long as it's not dry. And then even rubbing alcohol will kind of remove it when it's dry. All right, so I'm going to take a second and dry that. That's all right with you guys. Any questions before I dry? No, ma'am. Okay. All right, so I just want this brown stuff dry. All right, while she's muted, um, we are working on a new site for the videos that we have for sale. Right now, if you go to our website and go to the store entry, it'll take you directly over to the Vimeo page that has them all listed on it. Hopefully that will be done soon. Somebody asked if you can donate on the iOS devices like your iPad and iPhone through the Super Chat. No, you cannot do that. You have to go to our website, gingercooklive.gallery, and we can accept donations that way. What are we doing? Devices. Oh, I'm back on and I've turned back on? Uh, yeah, and we're buffering, so hold that thought. If we weren't doing a picture in a picture, we think we might not get it. No, I have nothing to do with it. I mean, it just totally, just totally drops us. It's not a fail. It's just a slow. I mean, it's a, it's an instant on off. Okay, okay. you should be back. All right, I'm back. So I've dried that, and I'm going to take a little yellow here. Now this is why I like professional acrylic paints, right? So you can come back with your next coat of yellow, kind of come down from the top and do kind of the opposite. Of what you just did. I want you to just see how that works, see? You can come back down here from your sunflowers and yellow is one of those uh, colors that makes is very nice in a second, you know, second coat of yellow, all right? And let's take a little bit of yellow oxide, okay? And do the same thing. Let's just uh, come up here like this. I'm going to make these a little darker, maybe with a little bit of red to it. Kind of a little bit oranger here. I'm going to say that I've got some sunflowers coming up this way. And then we're not really going to talk about the petals over here. We're just going to kind of make it a little darker where they are on these ones, okay? Then come back. And you can, what you do is you can just, because you're using professional acrylics, you can redefine your petals at any time. Does that make sense? You just come back with a little more yellow, and it'll paint right on top of whatever you've got going here. Let's make a little bit of a light orange color here. And again, we want to come off from the bottom of this flower like that. So you have these sort of striations going up, up on the, up here like that. All right, so there's that kind of this one. We'll go back and we'll add some more detail. Let's do the same thing to these. Let's just come on up here like this from these ones and come up this way. A little tiny bit of water on the brush. Tap it off. Always tap off here. Water. We're going to come up here with some orange in the flowers. So very, this is a very free, simple uh, painting. That's too bright. Because I've got too much paint on there. Wipe some off. And here's a little bit brighter orange coming up this way on these sunflowers. This was a pretty painting. Big. It's nice, small. I think it's a fun thing to do. Sometimes you just, you know, you don't want to spend 15 or 20 hours painting something. You just want the fun of getting something painted now. This is certainly the way to do it. I'm going to come up here like this out from the um, center of our flower like that. Maybe I'll come back down here with a little brighter yellow now on top of these. It's just pure cad yellow medium. Kind of brighten this up. Again, it's all about layering. That's the thing about acrylic paints. It is all about layering your colors. Kind of getting rid of the white like that. All right, so we've gotten, this is actually pretty good, right, like what we've got. Now the secret to this, if there is one, and I think there is a kind of a little bit, is that you don't outline every one, but you can have a little bit of an outline on just a couple of the petals so that they sort of stand out from the background. Does that make sense? You don't go back and outline methodically every petal. That's, I think that's where, um, it, th th then it makes it too contrived. What you want to do is you want to suggest an outline without actually doing it, okay? Like that, you don't need every one uh, outlined. Now we're gonna switch brushes. Well, somebody yeah. asked, what do you think of Cinnamon's new brush line? Oh, I love Cinnamon's new brush line, I do. I use this, I've been using the silver brush line for years and Cinnamon's got some great um, 
brushes in it. In fact, one of the ones she carries is this angle ruby satin silver brushes. I like all of their brushes, and I have used them. I think they're great. I'm very proud of Cinnamon. You got, you guys, she really got in there with some brushes that were just specifically designed for acrylic paint, and they're really great. And, um, and the silver brush line really listened to her as an artist, said, look, the, Acrylics are sort of the stepchild of oil painters, okay? And a lot, of, there was a, for years it was acrylics were considered inferior to oil paints. Now, of course, you know, 90% of all the professional artists I know are paint with acrylics, and if they do any oil, it's a little bit on top, unless we're talking portraits or something. And so what happened was, okay, so we're going to get a little bit of the brown now and the purple as I'm telling you this, right? Now I want to come along here with this angle brush, and I'm going to add like a fringe you see this out here into my picture, like this on the edge? Very I'm use just the idea. angle. Can you see how I'm doing that little purple? A little this, I'm doing a little fringe. If you have to, turn your canvas so it's not awkward. Don't be afraid to do that. Just come along here like this and do this little fringe. So yeah, so, um, and, and so in order to get the maximum out of um, brush sales, people would just say oil and acrylics. But basically, most, most stuff was designed or oil paints, not acrylics. And a, an acrylic artist just got along with best they can. And cinnamon really got them to look at, uh, you know, acrylic brushes need to be slightly stiffer. And there's just, um, they have a little spring to them. And the, the ruby satin line was really a good acrylic line. But, um, you know, short handled and long handled. These, uh, anyway, she really got through there and she found some really good. Uh, uh, she tested hundreds of brushes and get, came back with suggestions, and that was a great thing, really great thing that she did. And it's just, you know, it's one of those, um, uh, she'll go down in history as the person, I think she, this, she'll be a historical person for that. Uh, people will remember her for doing that, like Betsy Ross and the flag. Well, maybe not like that, but close. You know, I mean, I think it's important. Uh, though I'm her mom, so I'm a little prejudiced, but no, I still, as an artist, I was thrilled. Absolutely thrilled. Anne Marie would like to know how did Ginger come up with Cinnamon's name? Um, well, of course, I'm, my nickname is Ginger, and back in the um, in the when she was um, uh, going to be born, there was a, t a television show called Mission Impossible, and the lead character was named Cinnamon. The lead female. Lead female ca character. Well, sorry, yeah, lead female character. Wait, you. Picky, picky, yeah. Hey, lead. I'm just being accurate, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's you, right? accurate. <laughs> so, yeah, the lead female character says, and my mother would refuse to call her Cinnamon, hated the name. Was a, She said, that sounds like a dance hall girl. I hate that name. Well, you know what? Um, nobody asked you, right? We, we didn't ask her, right? <laughs> I mean, she went by the, this is my adopted mother, she went by the name Punky. I think when you have a nickname as Punky, then you don't really have any leg to t t criticizing anybody else's name, right? Do you really? So anyway, um, now, all right. So you see, we've got this nice little deal. Now what we're going to do? This is kind of cool. Is we're going to take a little bit of purple and yellow oxide. We're going to scoop it up. You ready for that? And I'm going to just all right. Little purple, little yellow oxide, little glob. Are we ready for globs? And I'm going to just. If you stay in that section for a while, I'm going to zoom in on you. All right. I'm going to come around here like this. Little yellow oxide, little purple, and I'm using just this angle brush, and, and I'm making the pumpkin seeds, right? I'm making the pumpkin seeds, and just sort of skipping it, and probably a little bit more yellow oxide than purple now. Okay. Jackson's Art Supply in the UK now sells cinnamon brushes. This I've, has been a public public service announcement. Thank you. I think that's important. We have a lot of probably UK people watching right now. Yes, we do. And that's important. And I think that there, um, you know, it really hasn't been since Bob Ross that, um, you know, and he was the big oil painter. And, and, you know, they started, you know, he came up with a nice line of palette knives and brushes. And Cinnamon really has really done a great thing here. So see how we're, we're kind of, you and know. And these are your pumpkin seeds? These are my pumpkin seeds. And what are your sunflower seeds? Sunflower seeds. Sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds are inside. You wouldn't see those. <laughs> Had you going know? for a second though, didn't I? You said yeah. No, yeah, you I just been smoking or trying to cover it up here. <laughs> no, I'm just seeing if you're paying attention to what no. I say. Apparently not. Oh, hi, I have a sign. We want to thank somebody that gave us a sign. 
What sign? Oh, yeah. Oh, the sign. Yeah, look at the, our sign. Let me put that in Somebody, my little that window. That came in the mail. Whoever sent us that. Somebody gave me that. I am, I'm sorry I slapped you, but you didn't seem like you would ever stop talking, and I panicked. Great sign. Do we know anybody like that? Not a person. Not a soul. Not, nobody. 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 All right. So, so that's the first layer. Thank okay. you, whoever who sent that sign. They, we, we have no idea. But they did. There wasn't a note with it, but it came from Amazon, and we thank you very much. And Love it. Uh, it came to our P.O. box. I'm going to hang it over her head. <laughs> I love it. All right, so here oh, we go. So, so, so you've moved. I moved. Did, did you not move? No, I was showing a sign. So you did that whole section without me seeing it. Well, it took like a second. Nobody Sean. saw it. Well, c come Can back. you erase it and do it again? No. You could. <laughs> I could, but I'm not going <laughs> to. All right, we did the same thing over here. This isn't rocket science, right? Yeah. Now, we're going to do something a little clever. I have we're going to take a little yellow and a little blue, and we're going to make this lime green color, right? Well, it's really an olive green color, right? Now, you ready for this? Now, we're going to just touch on top of these. Just do a little dab of the green. I'm back over in the big section. Are you lost? I got both sections now. I quit messing around with you. Uh, all right. We're going to just, this is our layering technique. A little bit of the green here. Okay, like that. Back over here. Just dab it on there. Dab a dab a do, right? Oh, dabba dabba doo, that sounds like uh, Flintstones. Flintstones, yeah, okay, so now see, already it's looking better, yeah, okay. Well, no, now they're green. No, they're not, they're, they're partially green and partially not green, pay attention here, they're, they're not, you know, you, you know. And they well, will dry darker. And they will dry darker. Now I'm going to come back with a little yellow and gold, all right, and I'm just going to see if I can put that on now. Yes, Jane, you heard correctly. They are selling Cinnamon's brushes in the UK at Jackson's Art Supply. Yep. We're not familiar with Jackson's. It must be like a Jerry's. Jackson's. Well, good for Jackson's. You see, we got a little bit of brighter yellow on here now, just tapping it like that. So you can get a little highlight. We're building these up a little bit. And um, just a dot here and there, right? Just a little highlight. All right, so there's our the center of our little sunflower things, which is cool. That's much as we can do there for right now. Okay. Looking good. So then you see. Then we're asking ourselves, so what else could we do? Well, we were in the green, so let's um, continue with our green. Maybe add a little more of that color and, and just paint it down here on the corner. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Where are you going? I'm down here at the bottom. Down here. Wait, wait, wait. Let me get down. Oh, okay. Oh, you're way over there. Yeah, so I'm going to take this and just as long as I had the green on my brush and it was on the palette and was going to dry anyway, I'm just going to come around here and paint the green in my, um, right here on the bottom of the canvas like that. Like that. So there's the green. Okay. Oh, Have you heard from thing. Cinnamon if Hobby Lobby's going to pick up the line? I've not heard. Okay. I've not heard. We, we don't know. These things are all top secret. Nobody tells me anything. <laughs> I, I I'm lucky to you know I I get the I get the school report with the grandkids and that's that's what and that's you're lucky what I to get. get that and I'm lucky to get that and I'm not allowed to you know I I I'm relegated to telling grandkids stories from when Honey was very small, but she was such a funny kid. I'm telling you what my oldest granddaughter is just going to turn 13 in October. When she was little, she was hysterically interesting. Uh, um, you do realize it is October now, right? Yeah, but it's the end of October. Okay. I'm she has a birthday. She'll be 13 at the end of October. It's not. She's not birthday yet. I haven't been told what to get her yet. Um, I think the grandparents are all doing something, but I don't know. All right. So, um, all right. Now I've got a little yellow oxide, and I'm just adding a little bit more more definition to this sunflower. Okay, because so I feel like it needs a little bit more right here. Okay, and. Um, the same thing here. I'm going to just, I need to see my picture here, how I had it in the first place. There's no sense in reinventing the wheel. Um, okay, so we're going to say that this is coming down like that. All right, so we're just kind of defining that a little bit more. Um, here's some yellow, tiny bit of cad red. I want a really bright orange. Okay, I want to come up here again and just brighten up some orange, maybe a little more cad red. I need a little bit brighter colors in here. Maybe a little bit more cad red with that. There we go. Just want to brighten this up just a hair coming down from the edge like that. OK. 
okay I'll just say you're there like that okay now if I go ahead and I put my stem on which is going to go right here remember I told you that we were going to kind of I'll show it to you we were going to kind of um, have it come here do curve and then this kind of curves out and in like this all right and then it's going to twist around this is just more, the same colors just more dark green going to twist this around like this and then it comes back like this this is the I need to get this dark green color into my stem like this like this doop to doop and this curves around so if you're worried draw everything and draw it in if you're worried you can take some chalk and, and draw it in now we'll take some lighter yellow okay and a tiny bit of cad red so it's not so bright and what we want to do is we want to curve this around like that just see like a rope see how I'm just taking the edge of this angle brush and curving that around Another really good place, place to get Cinnamon's brushes and these Ruby Satin Silvers is the BrushGuys.com. And they do deliver all over the world. And I think their sh international shipping is like $25. And um, if you go to uh, the BrushGuys.com and you go to my page and Teacher's page or Cinnamon's, you can find out these different brushes that are so awesome. And then if you use my name, Ginger Cook, all one word, you get a 5% discount. That's at the Brush Guys. How cool is that? So, you know, feel free to have fun doing that. Now look, at, see how I'm bringing this around like that, leaving some of the dark, letting that twist around on the on the stem. Dave now, would like to know, have you ever considered doing more than two YouTube videos a week? Oh, well, you know what? We have a, we do a lot of videos a week, but we have an online art academy, and which is our business. So our business is, you know, there's different ways that people, you know, get an income doing art, okay? So mostly, you know, it, you know, as a professional artist for years, there's different ways to do it. And, you know, our, our business is professional art teaching and getting people personal art coaching, which is our online academy, okay? So, um, you know, we appreciate YouTube and we like to share stuff with you guys. But when you really want to get down to the nitty-gritty of learning stuff, you know, really get into it and stuff, the personal art coaching and the, and the advanced lessons that we have and the very step-by-step -step beginning lessons, which are, John and I are just fooling around chatting here, but when you're on our website, there's no chatting with John. It's just step-by-step, -step very serious acrylic tutorials of how to do stuff, and you send your art in to me, and I, you know, make suggestions on how to make it better. So the answer is no. Um, we have not thought about doing that because really our main thing, you have to understand, I do a new lesson for our online academy every week they get a brand new lesson and in, in order to give quality lessons if you want really quality lessons you don't get you put a quarter in get a painting out you know what i mean <laughs> uh, just i like that one yeah i mean you just don't you know we're not like artist vending machines okay so to get a qu quality lesson takes a little bit of time and thought all right and then there's a huge amount of th time involved in editing and uplifting and, and you know and uploading and stuff you can't you can't imagine that the camera equipment the stuff that's involved for instance like um, um, here's a new lesson that we're putting up uh, this is a Vincent van Gogh that's uh, going to be on our uh, website in a couple weeks right for yeah. uh, our, our online Academy and this is actually one of I love this this is one of Vincent van Gogh's um, of, of you know flowers power paintings and I love all the fall colors don't you I mean isn't that just cool and that, that is one that Vincent could have used a little personal yeah. art coaching with because well you'll, you'll see it at the end you've yeah, got you'll to watch see, you'll all see, the you got to watch the end to see what we did that you know kind because of just he, he added was slightly a little bit. wrong on this one you know are you know different than I would have done it and for instance you guys remember the finger painting that we everybody loves so much oh yeah I do I remember that one do you have so it? we have a finger painting I don't have that painting but this is the finger painting that uh, this is actually from one of the old dead artists and I did this with my fingers and I show you guys how to be loose with that that's going to be one of the videos coming up on our website very very soon and um, so there we go with that now I'm going to you can see I've got my stem here now I've got that's kind of drawing now let's get a little more contrast before we go too much further let's get a little more contrast on our pumpkin now that we've got this 
All right, you guys with me? So we're going to just start putting in a little bit. This is right layering. Okay, here's this. And I know I want this a little bit deeper in here like this, maybe right about like this. I'm going to say this is a little darker. But I'm going to go right into the yellow, which I don't have any more out. So let's put some more yellow out, do a few little highlights on our pumpkin. And then we'll do the little spirally things, which is fun. Brenda's so there's a, what? Go ahead. Yeah. Brenda's asking, can you see? Can you make a suggestion how to keep painting from looking chalky? Also, how to achieve fine detail? Well, we've got, there's actually a video on YouTube on how to get fine detail, fine detailed lines. One of the things that you really need is a good brush. If you don't have a good brush, it's like um, the difference between washing your window with a rag or newspaper and a squeegee. I mean, there's a big difference if you've ever done any window washing. <laughs> and... Um, well, some people may never have done window washing, but if you ever have, all right, so we're going to sit there. Remember, wherever there's a light, there's a dark. So I'm going to put a little yellow here and bring some yellow out from the center of this pumpkin like this. And just come along like this, and we're adding our little light highlights here. So to, to get oh, fine we're detail... we'll again. Look at that. We're out. So that we're going to have to upload ours again. Well, I don't think... I don't think I'll upload it. Okay. You know, you, we nope. did a live show. I didn't get it back either. Huh? It didn't come. Let me try it again. It's not coming up. There we got in it. Getting back up to full speed. And you're back. Okay, so the question we're back, the, we, we have this buffering where we, what happens is we just get dropped like a hot potato. I mean, it just turns it off. It just turns it, it off. It just doesn't switch. disappear. It just disappears. So we're back. So the question is, and if, if, my, if, if you're watching my lips move and it's out of sync, nothing we can do about it. So sorry. <laughs> the information's still good. So the question that got asked was, um, how do you get fine detail? We have actually some, uh, some videos on YouTube on how to get detail. And one of the things I was saying was, is having a good brush. All right? And again, the brush is key. The, the brush is key. And also, this takes practice. You, painting is a skill. I want you to see that I've added some light here. I'm going to put a little white with my yellow and add a few little light highlights here. Um, make kind of a little bit lighter yellow in a couple places. I want to just, here we go. I'm going to say that there's some highlights on our pumpkin right here in the front. Maybe right, um, so there's a little bit of light. And I want um, a little bit of light coming around here like this on my stem here. Notice that I've got an angle brush. I talk about detail. I'm pinching it now because my brush works. And when you're talking about detail, you're not talking about painting something in an hour. When you're talking about detail, like for instance, this is some of the Christmas, um, uh, you know, uh, paintings that we've done on our website. It's called our Village Collection, right? Now there's quite a bit of detail on here. Well, this wasn't done with a large brush. This was done layered over time with small detail brushes. And one of the things I like about the fact that when we, when you look at our lessons, we take you, we don't just gloss over it. We take you step by step and show you how to do it. But the key is a really good brush. You know, that's more important than the paint, really. Your brush is probably, if, you, if it's a budget thing, your brush is more important than the paint. You can make, you know, a student grade paints work. Okay, you absolutely can. Maybe it not be your, your paint of choice, but you can. You can make them work, but you, um, um, we'll just now do a little light here. Now, chalky appearance. Could that be the grade of paint that she's using? And she could be that, yeah the, it? yeah, the chalky appearance could be absolutely the grade of paint you're using. And one thing about it, if you're using, for instance, gesso for white, that'll turn it chalky like mad. You know who used to, that Darnell, Jerry Darnell told artists to do that on his videos. You Jerry, use the gesso for the white? Yeah, and that, if you want something chalky, do that. Huh. It's not meant for that, but, um, you know, I mean, I guess there's applications for it, but I remember the first time I saw him tell people that, okay? So, all right, so you see what we've got here. It's our pumpkin. We've got a few little highlights on it like this. Not too many, but just a few, just to sort of indicate that it's round, right? Like that. So there you go. So we've got a, this nice pumpkin here, and I might take a little bit of purple and cad red medium, make an interesting burnt sienna. Did you guys know that? Rather than having to buy burnt sienna, purple, Dosney purple, you know, makes a pretty good burnt sienna. So if we want a little bit, a few little darker highlights, maybe, to show, show here on the pumpkin, right, like this. Maybe um, just, to, you know, darken something. that You don't have to outline the whole thing, but just sort of darken it like that, maybe. Something like that. You can do that. Um, I've got a little bit of that and a couple of these uh, little sunflowers here, too. 
where we're coming up here and uh, not, remember, we're not outlining promise me you're not outlining them all right you're just going to take a few that you need to define a little bit more and, and yours may be different than mine okay but maybe there's a couple that you feel need to be a little more defined Ooh, but, Judy spilled her guts what'd she say cinnamon's painting with some gesso now um, well, Jerry Donnell does, and he's like on YouTube and very famous on YouTube, but on PBS, he's very famous. And, you know, she may, you know, I mean, he's, he said to do it. I'm just saying that if you don't want it chalky, um, that's what you do. But cinnamon can do that. I mean, um, I would think it depends, it just depends on the effect you want. Okay. And it'll definitely matte everything. It, it'll make everything seem very matte. You know what I mean? Very flat. It's you know, gritty, so, isn't it gritty? I mean, it seems like sandy to me. Well, it's not. It's not. And it depends. And there's some really, there's some crummy gesso out there. Oh, my gosh. There's some bad gesso. Um, he who shall not be named, a company I, oh gosh, I have to be careful how I say that. But there was this company <laughs> that um, had this gesso, and it was so thin that it didn't cover anything. And then I had to take some amazingly cheap white I bought at Hobby Lobby from one of those, from another company, and mix the two together to even get any kind of decent gesso. The people that make really good gesso are Liquitex. I don't know about anybody, but I know Liquitex makes really good gesso. I'm, My man. guess is that Golden does too. I'm sure Golden does too. And, but I'm telling you what. Um, there is a difference in gesso. There's a difference in gessos too. And, and there is a difference in the gessos on the canvas. I mean, you can go to an art store, and of course, there's supposed to be gesso on the canvas, and there's gesso, and there's gesso. It's just like, um, um, well, it's huge difference in, in quality, okay? Huge difference, you guys, in quality. All right, so I want to do my little curly QE things, right? So now the question comes up, how would you do that? Well, my suggestion is that if you're not sure, you might want to just take your chalk and draw it on so that you're not... So you, can, you know what I mean? So that you can got a, got a line you want to follow. You know, you could just you could just draw it on like that. This one's coming up here like this and kind of looping back like that. Um, you can draw it on with chalk. Just chalk w wipes off, and then make sure everything's really dry so you can erase it if it's not. Let's make a dark green, and then get a little bit of water on the brush, a little bit more blue. I think we had phthalo blue out, but we really haven't used it much. But you could use it for that. Now you've got a, a an angle brush like this, and you're going to pinch it, all right? And then just put paint on one side, hold it straight up, and I'm going to say that I've got it going this way. And notice I'm tipping it around like this. I'm going to say it's tipping around like that, and then it's going to come this way. And then I'm out of paint, so now I'm going to get more paint. And I'm chipping it around like that. And I'm going to push a little harder here. And there's my first curly cue. Now I haven't put any highlights on it yet. But here's another one. But it doesn't matter where you put yours. I mean, I'm just, I think you could probably make this up. Though most of us do a little better following lines. There's one. Okay. Now a little tiny bit of water on the just the tip of the brush back into the paint because you want this kind of flowy. People often say, when would I want a fluid acrylic? Do I have an example of that over here? Oh, fluid acrylics. I think it's in the other studio. Is it in the other studio? Are you sure? No, I'm not positive. I saw a little jar over there, though. Um, that's not. That's retarder. Golden makes a, a small little jars of, of like very fluid acrylics. And if you need something with fine lines, again, uh, maybe it's a green, a brown for sure. White, brown, those are all colors that you might enjoy, you know, like to use. Okay, so that one, I think I'm not sure what I was going with there with that one, but here, let me put my picture back so I can kind of see where I had them. Okay, and um, now what we're doing here is we're going to, I want one going off of this way. Okay. All right, so that now what we want to do is take the yellow and just, we want to highlight, so we're going to put the paint on one side of the brush. And we're going to come back down here and add a highlight. It's going to be on the top 
like that where the light might be catching it. So it's going to change sides depending on where the light is. Do you see that? Yeah. Um, also, are you guys, var somebody asked me the other day, you should be varnishing your paintings using a Liquitex, um, you think the company paid me to say this, they don't. It's just that I happen to know this stuff works. Here's, it's called Liquitex Medium and Varnish. And you, I've got a whole playlist on YouTube on how to varnish your pictures and so that you don't get glare because that's the thing that people quit varnishing because it gets glary and then they hate it. And, you know, that will kind of seal in stuff too. That will be it's very helpful for the, um, okay. And uh, let's see, let's how about this one. In the same token, if you wanted a flat look or the... Use the matte varnish. Yeah, you've got to, you've got to varnish it first with the gloss, and then let it dry, and then hit it with the matte, and that will give you that nice, uh, you know, nice flat look that you're going for. Okay, so see how we've got this nice, um, um, and again, I'm pinching my brush, rinsing it. If you're in, just holding it straight up, twirling it. That's I mean, it works so well. I've got I can, on a small painting. I can do a whole painting with a brush like this. I absolutely love it. And I think one thing I might do is get a little white and a little purple, make this kind of purpley color, white, kind of a light purple color, and just come up here like this on the on the stem right here at the top. Maybe put a little yellow with it, a little white. See if I can get quite the color I want. There you go. Sort of it's a kind of yellow and purple make a gray. And you know how that there's that little edge of the pumpkin that's kind of white like that okay so that you guys so we're looking at that that's pretty much our picture but now I'm looking here I'm thinking I'm gonna go back and say well where, where, wherever there's a light there's a dark so what I can do is I can say you know maybe I want this a little darker here maybe right here a little redder maybe some pure cad red I think at this point I want this to be you know right like that okay and I want it a little bit darker right there so I'm just going to go back and see my contrast. Where do I want it to be? Do I need to pop the color up? After looking at this, do I need to pop some color up at the bottom of this? This is the wonderful thing about acrylics, is that you can come back and you can just take a look at your picture and layer, which um, you know it's hard to do with a lot of other mediums. I mean, it really is. And then we just say that there's a little bit of a, just a tiny bit of red coming off of here like this, okay? Maybe with a little yellow. I think my yellow is sort of... There we go. Let's do that and then do this. I'd there. like to encourage everybody to stay to the very end so you can see our new ending with uh, Judy giving her... All right, we're going to give a, we're going to do a quick giveaway, you guys. What? what? We are? We're gonna yeah, we're going to do a giveaway. We're going to be giving away this little painting right here. Really? Just like that? Yeah, just like that. Now, you guys, everybody that's hung in there this far with us, right? We hung in there through all the buffering and everything. We're going to do a number between. No. What are we doing? <laughs> we, have we, a, we have a form. We have a form on our An website. We have a form that's going to issue a number that's submitted, and then after we get them all in, I will ask Alexa to give us a random number between the form, the numbers. All right, so they have to go to our website. And here's the link. Not that link. That will never get you there. And John's got a link on the chat to go to and what's the all right now if you're watching this after the event this there's is no, only during the live please don't go to this forum because it won't be here anymore we just we just are doing this for the live for our live friends who hung in to watch us we're going to leave it up for 10 minutes alexa set a timer for 10 minutes 10 minutes starting now yeah i love alexa okay so what if there's a buffering then what happens it's not we, it's on the other server yeah but what about how will they know who won we're not buffering. We're good right now. Well, okay. But, you know, this just, is a very iffy... Well, we'll just keep coming back until we win. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. So the contest is running. You're going to go to that website, and you're going to put in the words. The secret words you have to put in there is sunflower and pumpkins. That goes in the text. Yeah. Just fill out that little form. How do they win? If you want to win this. Well, then what happens? I don't understand and then after 10 minutes, after 10 minutes, I'm going to go look at the form... Numbers. We have the first entry and the last entry. It'll say form number one, and the last one was number 200. And or whatever say, it is. Whatever it is. 
And they'll say, Alexa, give me a number between 1 and 200. Alexa, give me a number between 1 and 200. Your random number between 1 and 216. Well, see, that's how it'll work, except that's we'll wait till work. we're all done. Okay, so Alexa will make this up. This is, this is a great... You use. don't worry about a number, folks. You're just going to put you in the text put field, that, sunflower and pumpkin. And, you're, and fill out the form, and then we'll know where to mail it. Okay, and I'm going to um, sign this with our little Posca pens. I'm going to sign both of these. I'm going to move this out of the way. We're going to sign this. And we're going to talk a little bit about that because, um, you know, people would say, how could I... Um, Did you shake it? Uh, no. And even when they're open, you want to shake it. And that is true. You want to shake it. Uh, when you're doing a, any kind of paint pen, these Poscas, P-O-S-C-A's, uh, these are my favorite because I've had some open for a couple of months and they still write. Usually before, what would happen to me is that, you know, a week later, the things that, you know, the, those pens that, you know, they'd all be dried up no matter how much tape I put around them. So what you want to do is you want to, um, like over here on my thing, you want to just pump them gently. Don't smash them into something hard. I, I see people and they'll push them so hard and never, never shake it without the cap on. You can spray paint clear across the room, okay? Have or you lose done your that? tip. Well, you know, you learn the hard way, John. Most of us learn the hard way. Some people, you know. Some, we don't apply logic. Let's see. Shaking paint with cap off, nah, that should be fine. Well, yeah, but, you so know. So that five out of four people would do that, wouldn't they? Well, they might. So yeah. what we're gonna, I'm going to sign this right here. Look, here's our picture right here. I'm going to sign it. And uh, that's look how beautifully these sign. I'm going to do this, too. I'm going to sign this one. Alexa, how much time's left on the timer? you got to love that gal. Everybody should have an Alexa or two. I don't know. We we like her, but she doesn't know. Who knows the most stuff? Alexa Google. Does. Google is we the one do, that we knows. We still have to get a Google. We have not got a Google yet. Google knows stuff. I mean, if you ask, you can be driving. Google, he just knows everything. They know, know stuff. And if, you know, and here, I'm going to put the red slash through my name I'm gonna, with the pens here like that, just like that, and just like this. Now, this, this will go out after it's been varnished. We'll varnish this. This will go out, you know, uh, so probably, probably next, next week. week we'll, yeah. we'll mail this to you next week, this, uh, this little one, which just was sort of fun to do. If you guys want a, you know, personal thing, and I think I'll even put a postcard in there for you guys. Oh, we, wow. we appreciate you guys hanging in there for the live classes and waiting for the live. Can I answer some quick questions while we're uh, kind of looking at this, letting it dry, seeing where we are? Uh, Bonnie made a comment. Some never learn to fold socks either. Well, it's not that we're not. It's not that we're too dumb to fold socks, John. It's just that our, we value our time. There's so many hours in a day, and they can be spent, you know, eating please Hershey enter bars, only one time. folding only socks. One time, please. Just what? What? Enter only one time. They're asking can they enter more than once. No, yeah. enter only one time, please. One time. Just enter only one time. Yeah, that's fair. Ginger is jealous of Alexa. A little bit. She's more jealous of Google, though. Well, I'm not jealous of Google. I find it very helpful. I think, you know, we'd be lost. We would be lost driving around in circles if it wasn't for Google and that silly oh, we map. Love our Google. So, I mean, it gets us places. And also, what we love when we're driving in the car, what Google does for us is it tells you where the traffic areas is, routes you around. Yep. You know, I had that thing in my car. I have a Ford. And after three years, it comes with a, like a little talking device. And it'll give you directions and stuff. I forgot what they call it. But anyway, it comes with that. But after three years, they want like $78 a year for that. Why are they, are they on crack? I mean, are they crazy? <laughs> Who's going to give them that? I mean, go, it's I on my, my phone, phone for free. I do what I want. Wait, why on earth would I give them $78 for something that I do free on my phone? I mean, yeah. you know, I think that when uh, people just really need to think some of their promotions, right? That, <laughs> that, 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 you know, that's my big thing. So, all right. So now, what could you do? All right. What could you do with this? That would make this even more interesting. Oh, while we're waiting for something. ten minutes, what could you do that would make it more interesting? Well, one thing you could do, and I'm going to show you this right now. One thing you could do. What do we got here? Not zinc white. What do I got? I mean, just Alexa. Zinc white. How much time's left on the timer? All right. This is high solid gel gloss. Okay. With about four minutes and thirty seconds left. Four this minutes is, and thirty seconds, folks. This is high solid solid gel gloss. Now, one thing you could do, and I'll show you this picture Monday when it's live, when it's done. Wait, wait, wait. What are you going to do to this? 
Well, I was going to show you. I'll, I'll put it on the other one. I won't put it on this one because it's dry. I'll put it on a piece of this one. Remember this big one right here? I'll show you. Okay, so here's your picture, right? All right, here's your picture. Here it is big. Now, let me show you what you can do, do I need to, to make zoom this. Out or what? Zoom out a little bit, and I'll show you what you can do. This is a great trick. This is high sol solid gel gloss by Golden, but Liquitex makes that stuff, and other companies do. It's a, it's, it's gonna, it looks white, but it's going to dry clear. All right? So one hold, of the hold, it, hold it underneath the palette cam. Hold it gently. Yeah, while we're waiting, right? High solid gel gloss. Okay, go All ahead. right, so what you do to make it look like it's really a textured painting, you can go back and do this with anything. So take a brush. Any brush. Any brush, like this. And just oh my! paint this on really thick. And now look, just goop it up like frosting, kids. Goop it up. Paint it on very thick, okay? And what this is going to do when it's as dry, this is a cool trick, isn't it? And you just follow your brush strokes like that. See, I'm gooping it up. It's going to dry clear. All right, looks like I'm just covering the whole thing in white. Yes, it does. I totally freak out. Being a sock folder, this is not for me. Well, again, I want to get back to the sock folder issue. It's not that we don't know how to sew fox. Any fool can fold a sock. Okay? Can they? Any fold, any, any fool, did I stutter? Any fool can fold a sock. Any fool can fold a sock? Any fool can fold a sock. It doesn't take a high IQ to fold a sock, but there, again, there's so many hours in a day, and if you know, you know, it just, I'm, they're my socks, I'm the one that sees them. My socks aren't personally vested in their being folded. If I have only one color of socks, they just go in a drawer, and nobody needs to fold anything. You just grab two. It's called simplification. So you would... Mm -hmm. Put together unmatched, even though they're the same color, they were born together, you know. Uh, no, the they washing were buddies machine. together. No, they weren't, John. Did you think that? Did someone tell you that? Did well, one of my girlfriends uh, told her daughter that you should keep your shoes neat in the and pairs in the closet because it was bad luck not to do it. Now that's a great one, isn't it? You scare kids into thinking, well, are your <laughs> this happened to you? Did you fall down on the bicycle? Are your shoes folded in the closet? I mean, I'm telling you what, it wouldn't take long. All right, now see what's happened? Now look here. I'm just putting this on thick with the brush, showing you a little brush strokes. Now when this dries, now there's a trick. I'll show you how to do the the um, the stem on this. Now you guys watching this? I mean, I just this is the kind of stuff. All right, now you go round like this. You can do this on your prints, too. you got some old print hanging on the wall, some sad little paper print that uh, you know somebody gave you and you kind of found out the picture and you were going to paint it one day and you haven't got around to it. Well, do this on your prints, too. Okay, so I'm going to come around on my, now look here, on my, um, stem. on my stem, like that. Big word. Stem. Well, it is for some people, John. It's not for me. <laughs> Was it a big word for you? <laughs> Listen, he's trying to retaliate for the for the sock folder comment, but I'm, I'm honestly, you know, when you um, anyway, we're free spirits, you know. Sock folders are not free spirits. We are free spirits. All right, now see how I'm coming around like that, all around. You can see how I'm painting it, and it looks it's actually starting to disappear. Um, I'm actually, you know, it's starting to disappear now. For this, what you do with this, like these, you just come around here like this, dab this on real thick promise you it'll all dry this will give it great texture I'm just gonna dab this on I don't even have to follow it where I did it okay dab this on like that oh and I meant to say on that form you have a place to say you want to be on the newsletter or not be on the newsletter if you do not want to be on the newsletter please tell us do not put me on your newsletter it, it, won't, it costs us money to have people on the newsletter so if you don't want to and we're so good at sending them out. We're sorry about October, so kind of got We're going to do an October and November together. It's going to be a, we got, a we got special busy. fall edition. I know. You see what I'm doing right there? See, it's all coming along. Now, I'll, again, I'll show you this drawing Monday. And this is really cool because this allows you to go back and add great texture. Okay, time picture. is up. Okay. Alexa, off. Okay. Time is up, you guys. So that's the last chance to to get that, and I'm just finishing up this. It, what did that take? Less than seven minutes. You guys impressed? Less than seven minutes to coat this picture. And this is a 16 by 20 okay. with, with high gloss gel. Let me get the numbers now. John's going to get the numbers, and we this appreciate so you guys. Exciting. And I hope you subscribe to our channel, write nice comments, and like us, and all that good stuff. Tell your friends about us. Put our stuff in playlists. 
let other people see us. We really cannot be on um, on YouTube, you know, you know, all week long. And um, but we we we're happy when we we can be here. How's that? Okay. Now. All right. Now here's the trick. One thing. When John's looking, here's the trick. What you want to do, you guys, is don't keep going over it. Once you do it, you're done, okay? If you keep going and screwing around with this and going over it, you could turn it white. You could really ruin the picture. You do. You got this one shot, you're doing it like that, and then you have to quit. Everybody's with me on that? You have to quit. You cannot keep going over it. Does that make sense? If you want to, you can take like a little tiny thing like that and you know, kind of outline the detail if you need to, but at some point you must not keep going over it. Okay, so you want to put your little grooves back, like where the stem is. You want to make sure you're carving that back out with just the edge of a brush or something. But please don't keep going over it if that makes sense. And this will look like you painted this with lots and lots of texture. Yeah, really, it will. Let's come up from the bottom like that. And this is um. A lot of times someone will say their jaclay print is enhanced, and all they've done is this, which I, I don't really consider that enhanced. Enhanced on a print, in case anybody wants to know, is where the artist actually took some paint and painted something on the print. That's called an embellished jaclay or something. And throwing a bunch of um, gel on it like this, I don't think it's uh, uh, to me that's not enhancement. Because it doesn't, you know, but it does, it does make for some interesting texture on your picture. Now, we'll look at this Monday. Anyway, that's how you do it. I'm going to put that brush in water, and we'll clean that. Take this out of the way. John, do we have a winner? No. So it, they changed their form. It has numbers on it, but I'm trying to figure out how to get to them so I can see them. Okay. No. No. So see? I have the form code... Well, where do I put this code now that I have it? I don't want to import. I want to export. Okay. Select the form. Well, you're, the give, form. give John a couple minutes here. He's looking while you're waiting. I'm going to show you something else. So what else can I do with this high gel, solid gel stuff? Well, besides just putting it on top, you can mix it with paint. Did you guys know that? So here we go. So you can mix it with paint. So as you, you've got the film on my uh, palette here? Yeah. So what you do is you take it. You can do it about 50-50. And let's just, um, mm -hmm. let's just take that and a, maybe a little bit of the ultramarine blue. Okay, like that. Here's this little high gloss stuff like that, right? Now, do you see how thick this is? See how that's globbing up? Now, what you can do is take a little tiny brush, which we got one, must have one somewhere, here we go, like this, and you can scoop it up like this. Now, remember on the other one, we just plopped the, um, we just plopped the, um, the, the, the clear, the, you know, the kind of not clear stuff on top, right? But this is where you're actually putting paint, and it's going to raise up and make, it will not go flat. Why? The reason your acrylic paints go flat is the water evaporates and and then the paint is flat. So the reason you use gels, now look, see what we're doing here? The reason you use gels is so that um, the other thing is that you can add texture to a painting, say something like this. You can add like these little seeds, like to see what I'm doing. John, can you zoom in on this for me? Yep, that's what I'm just doing now, boss. Okay. You can add some uh, seeds. I, I would say don't mix it up as much as I did. I'm going to put a little yellow in that too. I just I didn't want it quite mixed up that much. It's better if you kind of don't mix the paint up that well so that you have sort of a combination of maybe some green and gold. But now that's the other thing you can do with this is you can just plop this down and it will make some awesome texture on here. Okay like on the seeds like that that will be that will look really nice right, just a lot of different ways to paint stuff you figured out who's won yet you're working on that I'm gonna bug you right well best now, now where are you oh 
What? Look. What are you doing? I give up. What's it doing? I'm ready when you're ready. All right. So I'm going to just... All right. You guys ready? Now, you see how I did that? Now, can you see the difference between these two sides? Well, no. Not when I'm this close. But now All we right, can. Back it up. Can you see the difference? Yeah. And you could do that, for instance, like a texture like, like, like this. You could do that um, on your pumpkin, um, on mm. your pumpkin uh, twisty thing, too. You can add paint. You could have done it on the petals of the leaves, but we couldn't have done it in the amount of time because this stuff takes about 24 hours to dry. So, but if you wanted more texture on anything like this, if you wanted more texture, that's the way to get it, okay? And um, so you can either add it to the paint or put it on afterwards. Okay, John, go All ahead right. and tell us who's winning. Why we I'll had just 105 this. entries in, and Alexa will be picking the number totally at random. And I will move the microphone closer to Alexa so you can hear the actual winning number. Alexa, pick a number between 1 and 105. Your random number between 1 and 105 is 57. 57. 57. 57 is our lucky winner. Thank Ooh. you, Alexa. 57. So now you have to go figure out who 57 is. All right, so who is 57, John? Well, we're going to find out. Should okay. About, there's 87. I mean, we're, we're, we're curious, aren't we? We all want to know who 57 is, right? I'm closing in. Closing in. Yeah. 57 is Sue Clark. Sue Clark, all right. Sue, Sue Clark, Clark, you're our official winner, number 57. Congratulations, Sue. That's awesome. Hope that you had fun with that. That you had fun. Now I'm going to just, as long as we're doing it, I had the gel out now, you guys. So I'm going to take some purple and brown, use the rest of that, and put it in the gel. You see that? I'm going to put that in there like that. There's the purple and brown. I'll grab a little of this red, put that in there too. All right, that's nice, right? See that? Now it's all, see how thick that is? It's like peanut butter. It's real thick. Now, Sue if, Clark, if you're still out there, please uh, email us and contact us with the mailing address you'd like to use. All right, I'm going to come up here like this. Now you could put... You can drop some dark in between like this. You guys ready for this? You can drop or, you know, you can add more to the fringe. Do you see what I'm doing here? I mean, you can have some fun with gels. This was a good, I think this was fun. You guys think this was fun? Monday we're going to do something. I don't know what yet. I, I never know till Monday what we're going to do. But we're going to do something fun Monday and Tuesday. We'll have some live classes, so we wish you back. And I hope everybody had fun. If you have some questions that did not get answered today, because sometimes the chat goes by so quickly, and you thought, or you thought of it afterwards, well, I wish I'd asked her that. Email us, and and I will mention you on the show and um, answer your question if I can. You know, if it's a question that's inter interesting to answer. So anyway, that's the uh, secret of doing the gels and doing a little texture on your. On your pumpkin painting. On your pumpkin painting. You can do the whole thing or just come back and just do that and add the paint. So now you know new stuff. New stuff. Hey, do you have the picture that was being given away? This is uh, Sue This Su is, this is going to Miss Clark. This is Sue Clark. Sue Clark has won the pumpkin picture. And we want to give credit to Judith Guitar, who um, is... Gonna a, enjoy the exit when we go say When you goodbye. hear the exit, as you hear the exit, that is the voice of not me, but Judith Guitar, and that's her original song. So and we I, appreciate it, Judy. Thank you. You are a hero. Thank you, Kim, for the donation as we sign off for a wonderful Saturday afternoon. We'll be back Monday live at 7 p, 7.30 p.m. Central. Monday and Tuesday this week. And if you've got any ideas about what you'd like to see Monday, write me. <laughs> or leave a comment. I'll, after, you no, know, no, don't leave a comment here. Here, you've got to leave it after the video's up. You know what I'm saying? I know Let what you're know. saying. Do they know? All right. Anyway, that's what I did. That's what we're giving away. That's kind of fun. Here was the um, one that we uh, did with the gels. Now, can you see it's starting to dry already? Yeah, it it's is. It's starting to disappear. It, I promise you, it dries clear. Unless, of course, you grabbed the round jar and did gesso, <laughs> which one of my students did, and painted her entire painting white. With gesso. With Excellent. gesso, thinking she was using a gel. Read the labels. Yeah, they all look the same. I mean, they do. They all look the same. It's, it's, it's easy to see how it could happen. Absolutely. 
All right. Thanks, you guys. Have thanks, a wonderful everyone. afternoon. I'm a student, I say with glee, of Ginger Cook's Academy. Take your time and do not rush. Use ruby satin silver brush. Don't use black and mix the green. Learn what blend and grayscale mean. Yes, I hope each day to earn coaching praises as I learn. I'll be an artist, wait and see. Ginger means the world to me.